and the source IP address is the IP address of the default gateway, and the target MAC address is 1B. The target IP address is 1B. So when 1B gets this, it will now know the default gateway MAC address because it's here. The source address in this instance is that of the default gateway. Okay. PC1B has the uh, MAC address, the default gateway. Now it can send the ping to the default gateway. And if we look at the ping packet, destination address, and we'll see it's the destination address or MAC address that belongs to the default gateway, which is R2. Uh, earlier I said that devices that are connected or are part of the same local area network will communicate at layer two by using, of course, the MAC address, right? So if a packet is going from one device to another, and if there are, I'll put it this way, if, if a packet is going from one device, but and that packet has to go through multiple devices to get to an ultimate endpoint, the MAC address of the packet or the layer two address will constantly change, but the layer three address, which is the IP address, will not change, and we'll see that. So let's look at the uh, source MAC address is the IP address of 1B. The destination is R2, which is the default gateway. And let's look at the layer three information. We see the source IP is 0 0.2 and the destination is 3.98. And we see the uh, actual ping information as the sequence number one. Right. All right, the packet is now at R2. All right, we see the inbound MAC address, or well, the inbound detail, and we see the source MAC address is that of 1B. Destination is uh, R2. But let's see what happens as R2 repackages the original packet, which is here, or the layer three information, which is here. And uh, again, it repackages it with the new uh, layer two information. All right, we're going from uh, Ethernet here to serial. So it requires a different protocol. In this instance, it's HDLC. And uh, again, there's some type of addressing structures, a little different from uh, Ethernet. But the point of this particular um, objective here is to let you see that the layer three information stays the same, but the layer two information will change and, and will be in accordance with whatever the link is between the two devices. And in this instance, the two devices are R2 and R1. Okay. And here's the response. At your leisure, go ahead and ping a, a variety of devices. Perhaps you may want to ping from 1D to R2 or ping from 1D to the Eagle server, 
you may want to access the web browser and then put in the the domain address that we configure earlier within the DNS just to, just to track the uh, DNS and web traffic and we'll do that. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'll reset the uh, simulation go back to 1B. And I'm going to go to the web browser and put in this domain name, Eagle Server dot example dot com. Click go. Go back to uh, simulation mode here. Click capture forward. We see, well, we want we want to request a web page. But we learned in uh, an earlier chapter that uh, the web browser actually needs the IP address of the web server. In order to get the IP address, it must get the IP address from a DNS server. So therefore, we're going to see the DNS process take place first. Okay. If we click the uh, packet, we should see the source MAC address is that of 1B, and the destination MAC address is the next stop en route to the uh, ultimate destination, which is, in this instance, the next stop is the default gateway. So that should be the destination MAC address. Okay. All right. We see uh, two things happening here. We see R1 receives the DNS request and it notices the the packet needs to go to this particular IP address, but it does not have the MAC address, so it has to initiate an ARP request. Okay, and we see that here. Okay, we see the uh, destination. Again, it's broadcast because our process is broadcast in nature. The source MAC address is going to be that of R1. Again, this looks like the uh, same uh, setup that we saw earlier, in which the target MAC address is all zeros because at this moment R1 does not have the target MAC address and it's trying to get the target MAC address that associated with this particular layer three address. Okay. All right, now that R1 has the uh, IP address that's associated with the domain name eagle-server.example.com, 1B can actually request the web page. And that's what's happening now. Okay. 
And remember earlier, we configured the server to be, well, to have two roles, that of the uh, DNS and also HTTP. Okay, again, just go ahead and um, trace packets of a variety at your leisure. 